Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along to this, what hopefully will be a quick tip tutorial. It's supposed to be sort of fast because this is really easy, but this was cool. I thought this was a lot of fun. So basically, I went to do a 3D print model of something that I saw on Reddit the other day, and it was this marble machine kaleidoscope, and was going to print it and have a go like that. But then I thought, do you know what? I want to put this into cinema. So I really quickly put it into cinema and made this. And as you can see, this is an absolutely perfect case where it uses the physics really, really nicely. And this took me seconds to put together. So I thought this is perfect uh, as a quick tip. I'll show you how I did it. And it was really cool how you put your marbles in and you, you flick it up and down and the marbles all whiz around this contraption. And there's a couple of nice little things in here that hopefully you'll get something out of. Firstly, Thingiverse. This is where you can get 3D print objects that people upload. There is a ton of really, really cool, useful stuff. If you use anything, do be sure to double check the licensing. This one, like I said, no affiliation. This one I have no affiliation or anything, but I will include the link in the description in case you want to get this and have a play yourself. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download the files. So grab the files. Okay, so once you've downloaded your files, extract them into a folder and you'll be met with these. This one comes with three. So there's a single, a double and a triple. And it was the triple I was playing with, but you could do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with variations of the different shapes and stuff. It's a really cool idea. So anyway, let's drop the triple one into a scene and press OK. OK, and there it is. And if we press N and B, we can see the geometry. This is all tries because it's been exported as an STL, but this is fine. For what we're doing, that's not really a problem. If you did want to tweak it, you might want to recreate some of the parts. But to be fair, what we're doing right now, this is absolutely perfect. We need to animate this. Now, right now, it's one piece. So we need to split this up into parts. The really easy way to do this is go to Mesh, go to Conversion, and Polygon Groups to Objects. Boom. If we look inside our object, we'll see we now have two new objects which we can drag out. These are our geometry. This top one is just a null, so we can delete that. This one is the outer one, which is going to stay solid. This one is the one that we're going to move around. We're going to move this up and down or something along these lines. We could animate it with keyframes, but I'm going to use a MoGraph effector to do it just for speed and simplicity. So I'm going to first put it in a cloner and set the cloner to one. Now this is a kind of legacy thing. You could actually use a, a MoGraph effector on a standard geometry, but I always find it causes some problems. There's always something that doesn't seem to ever work right. Whereas with a cloner, it's always rock solid. So I just always put it in a cloner and set it to one. Then with that cloner selected, I'm going to go to MoGraph effector and plane, and you'll see that's all jumped up, which is great. If we come under parameter, we can see that's here under the Y, it's moved up 100. So this is what we want to do. This is our normal position. And then this is going to be our moved to position. So let's just find, uh, it looks like, yeah, about minus 12, looks to be pretty much spot on for that moving downwards. Perfect. Now in our plane, we can go to fall off and select linear field. And then basically, if we move this back and forward, you can see that that's pretty much what we want to happen. So perfect. Let's keep it to this side where it doesn't move, right? And then I'm gonna hit keyframe. And then I'm just gonna come to frame 50 and slide it to there, there we go. Okay, and then set another keyframe. Brilliant. Now, if I press play, we can see that our thing drops into the floor. It's a bit slow, but that's fine. And it also only does it once. So what can we do to make this repeat this forever? Well, if we go to animate, we can select track here. And here you have after it's currently set to constant. Now you can set this to repeat. This isn't what we want here, though, because that's going to basically jump and constantly move it like that. We want this to oscillate. So now it goes back and forward. We just give ourselves a few more frames. We'll type in 500 here for now. Oops. There we go. And that will now animate backwards and forwards for as long as we want. It's a bit fast, so let's move this back to about 30, I reckon. Something like that. Should be fine. Okay, so that is great and doing exactly what we want. We could, if we wanted it to pause for a moment, just select these keyframes and click and control drag them, maybe 10 frames, and then they'll go down, wait, then it'll come back up. Down, wait, and then come back up. We may not want that. so. I'm just saying you might do. <laughs> right, so we now have our animation done, so we can now go back to our startup uh, view. And let's create some balls. So I'll go to sphere, create a sphere, 
that's a little bit big. Now, if I remember rightly, the creator of the model said that it's for 11 centimeter diameter, no, 11 centimeter, 11 millimeter marbles. So I'm gonna put in here half of that and do six mil, approximately 11, half of 11 anyway. And I'd say that that looks about right because this is to scale. Let's now go into the top view and see where we wanna put this. So I'm gonna plop this over this one here. I'm gonna hold control, make a copy of it and plop it over that one. And then we'll do the same thing here, hold control and plop it over that one. Right, let's now set up the dynamics so that we can see if this is actually working as we expect. I'll just move these down a little. I'm gonna right click on the spheres and set them to rigid body. So let's right click and do simulation rigid body. Now I did a rigid body video, 10 top tips for rigid bodies, uh, which if you haven't seen and you're not familiar with rigid bodies, I recommend check that out. And then you'll understand exactly what we're doing here. Otherwise, if you have seen it, then great. Or if you don't wanna see it because you already know, then perfect, just forget what I just said. So so let's go right click on this one. This is a static one. So we'll do collider and we'll leave that as static mesh. And then this one is a moving mesh. So we'll do collider and change it from static mesh to moving mesh. And now if I hit play, we should get an idea of whether this has actually worked. And it looks like it has. So look, brilliant. Me marbles are working their way around my system. Perfect. So. Now let's go into the top view. I'm gonna grab these three balls. You can set this up however you like now. That's the beauty of this, but I am just going to click and control drag those to there and those to there. Then let's go here from the first frame. We'll press play and then quickly pause it. Now I'm gonna select all of these tags and go to dynamics and set initial state. Now I can rewind and now all my balls are sitting in the right place. Ooh, perfect. And that's now working absolutely beautifully. So that's the point. It's as quick and as simple as that, just to put a model in, put some dynamics on, and there you go, you're working. So the rest of it is just me playing around really. So I wanna just make it look a bit prettier because I don't like all of this looking like this. <laughs> so I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to use Infidio Pro for my lighting. And that's already looking pretty groovy. Now this is quite small, so. We'll just rotate in video, something like that. But I think the lighting will still be all right. Then I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna set it to physical. I'm gonna add ambient occlusion. And in my physical settings, I'll set it to progressive and turn on depth of field. Now, if you've ever seen any of my videos, you'll know that these are my go-to settings that I pretty much do every single time. So now I'm going to create a camera put myself in that camera and set it to something like 0.5, I don't know yet. Under object, I'm gonna click my focus distance arrow and I'm gonna click somewhere in the middle here so that it's there in the center. And then just a quick render just to see, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I do like to do is in my Infidio, I like to set my key light to have hard shadows because then that creates a nice striking set of shadows as well so we've got a nice combination of soft and hard balls soft and hard honestly this this video is going to probably get flagged on youtube so what do i want to do next let's see i want to add some color so we could create some materials i'm sorry but again i'm going to cheat i'm going to use my material pack called text just because it's so easy we're coming to basic and we use all my basic ones uh, it saves you having to create them every time. So I'm gonna make shiny white for my outside and I'm gonna make shiny gray for my inside. That looks pretty groovy. Uh, and then let's go to the illuminated ones and you can set some interesting colors on the ball. So I don't know, we'll set say pink for the top three and then red for the next three and then I don't know, blue for the next three. That should look pretty nifty and then i'm going to do one more thing actually i don't like the way these just sort of disappear into the floor when they're going down so i'm just going to put in some cylinders so let's up the number of rotations and shrink that down it's going to be something like that i'm not going to worry too much about what we can't see and I'm going to come into caps fill it make it say five that's looking pretty good and then I'll just make a copy of that and move it over here and then do the same for up here. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm not gonna spend too much time. There we go, perfect. And I am going to set those ones. Let's just grab uh, the, 
the glowing white. I'm going to set those to glowing white so that it's not all dark and dingy in there because this is supposed to be a nice, bright, vibrant uh, thing. And let's also just come in here, go to Luminance Channel, and let's ramp these, these colors up a bit so that they're really glowing. And that should look really cool. There we go. If you want to make these yourself, it's really easy, but yeah, like I say, I'm just saving time. It's supposed to be a quick tip. I'm not supposed to be here all day. And there we go. But you know what I have forgotten to do? I forgot to turn on global illumination. So I need to come up to here, effect global illumination, and I'm just going to use interior preview. And now what? look at the difference. There we go. We've got our glowing. Boom. It's a little bit bright, so I could probably drop down the uh, intensity of the lighting in the Infidio Studio. But once that's animating, as you can see from the one I already did, it looks really cool. So there you go. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. That was just a quick tip tutorial thing. The idea of that I didn't spend an hour just waffling on, uh, even though that's what I'm now doing now. So anyway, if you did enjoy that, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell so you get notified whenever I put a new video out. And that would be wonderful. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.